All right, so this just arrived in the mail and um, <clears throat> does sound pretty good. Um, perhaps needs a bit more sound dampening, we'll see. Um, there's a few problems though. It turns off automatically and uh, it does not remember the set volume. So if you want to take it to full volume, uh, you would have to do this absolutely every time you turn it back on and the second problem uh, or perhaps the third right if we count the the box as one of the problems is the volumes are not synchronized right so this uses Bluetooth uh, 4 I think I suspect it uses a CSR 8645 chip inside and that one had Bluetooth, I think, 4.1, and at least with iPhones, but I do have it on good word that it doesn't do this with Android phones either. The volume is not synchronized, right? So you turn the volume up on the phone. If this is still turned up at, uh, turned up at half, then it's still half, right? So you would have to either turn this all the way up to max and control from the phone, or vice versa, right? Turn the phone up all the way and control it from here. It's kind of, I don't know, right, it's, yeah, that's really unacceptable though, so. Alright, so the bottom part is quite difficult to get off, but eventually it is doable. And let's see, we seem to have just one connecting wire. I hope I do not electrocute myself, although... Yeah, that seems fine. Okay, one. And two. Okay. So... This is the bottom part containing the base reflex board. Uh, some dampening material over here. We have a little PCB for the uh, aux in jack. I have no idea why they made it so large though. But uh, yeah, so that just has the connectors going up. And it actually has quite a few, goddamn. Very nice that they have labeled it, so. You know what? Why is it what? But seriously, why does it have absolutely so many? I don't think this has... I don't think this has optical in, right? For it to require power, but who knows? Yeah, I don't know. No idea. I mean, they could definitely have two grounds to detect when a thing is plugged in, but more than that, I have no idea. Have a little ferrite bead on the, on the input wire from the mains, very nice. It's crimped into the case, so that's also quite elegant. The subwoofer port is uh, tapered on this side and also on this side, but just a little bit. It's, there's going to be some amount of um, turbulence here and so, like wind noise and shit, but uh, first audition was, was fine. Uh, the, the other problem is I can't turn it up too loud here because, uh, yeah, the walls are made out of cardboard. And this is the speaker, so quite a barren design. The drivers themselves look actually quite nice. Have a little power supply here. We'll uh, check the voltages on that. Uh, the little tweeter, amplifier board, and we actually have two chips. Uh, the Bluetooth board, which we're going to peel off and uh, peel the label off briefly. Uh, very nice, the encoder is on a separate board, right, so it's mechanically isolated from the main board. So if that fucks up, you can change just that, so that's quite quite elegant design. And it's made from the same PCB, right, so just route it out, so that's kind of nice. Uh, so that being said, I think I should take a closer look at this, and we'll uh, discuss the voltages that this takes, and what chip it uses. So. Okay, so as I've expected, the board layout is incredibly nice. I have absolutely only respect for whoever whoever did it. So first of all, all the connectors are labeled. Absolutely all of them. So we can see why there's so many wires on the on the jack, for example. Um, and the answer is no reason. 
Um, right, the subwoofer wires, for example, we have the power in, which obviously says the voltage, right? So we have a single 18.3 volt rail coming in. Um, I do plan on making this, so either selling it or making it into a portable speaker. And I think it would work down to at least 12 volts, I would expect, right? Because it only has um, switching converters creating all the rails and these chips run up to 24 volts and down to, what was it? So they run down to, uh, what was it, 8 volts, right? This one and, uh, yeah, both of them. Right, so the subwoofer is powered, the, the two woofers are powered by a TAS5731M and that's um, basically 60 watt amplifier and uh, the tweeter is powered by a 20 watt amplifier so quite a lot of power into this, very, very impressive. Uh, they're also digital uh, amplifiers, right, so they have an I squared C line going from the uh, CSR chip to them uh, the lines are broken out so you can so this if you want to learn like speaker design this is the perfect 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 test bench right and for 80 bucks it's like the best development board on the goddamn planet so it has the i squared s lines broken off for both chips and labeled right it uses a stm 32f i think it was was it yes um microcontroller so you can actually buy boards with the stm 32f from aliexpress for like a buck and these are incredibly powerful and you have the programming chips all the all the interfaces so you have um these two interfaces i actually never played around with these and i i don't know what this is called i, I it's it's escaping me at the moment anyway so, but you could definitely access this chip and reprogram it and whatever, what have you. So, if someone is more versed with these uh, and could actually have a play with this and uh, let us know how to reprogram it, because what would be incredibly useful, as I've said, is uh, eliminating the auto sleep feature and making it remember the volume. Because I'm pretty sure this has some non volatile memory which we can access in a ring buffer situation so that we don't wear it out and stuff like that. So that is uh, great food for thought, right? Uh, next up we have the Bluetooth chip which is, um, I don't know about this model. So it's a CSRA 64110. Um, it has its programming pin, right? It's SPI pin over here. Again, very nicely labeled. And so basically you can also play with this, right? Remove the annoying sounds and, and whatnot. And the rest is pretty much just support components. Uh, so this is the jack, right? Probably some filtering on the jack and what have you. Uh, power supplies. And uh, yeah, processor. Two amps and that's pretty much all. And just look at how, how nicely everything is done, right? So they've... They've put um, only connectors, right? So you can basically remove, hot swap the wires. I know, just very nice. The speakers also look quite decent and sound quite decent as well. Power supply is also nice. So again, right, everything that IKEA makes is so thoughtful and so nicely engineered and so friendly engineered, right? To put it that way, right? Very nice to see everything labeled and, and whatnot. And also that uh, nice uh, cutout for the for the volume is also very nice touch, right? They didn't have to do that, but they did, right? They could have just pulled some wires off of the switch and just put it here, or even soldered to the main thing, right? But no, no, they they went the extra mile. So yeah, very happy with this. But um, with its problems of turning off automatically and not remember the vo uh, not remembering the volume, I I really have no use case for it. So let's see how that unfolds. And uh, again, if anyone can program the STMs, is proficient at that, and lives in Germany next to Frankfurt, we can uh, meet up and um, maybe have a squiz at this. Or if 
anyone else in the world can also buy one of these and have play around, let me know. But uh, yeah, that's all for, for this video. Have a good one. Okay, so last up, let's check the uh, current this thing draws and power. Um, you can actually run it down to 8 volts, so what the um, what the TAS amplifiers are rated for, so let's uh, see that. Let's make it as close as possible, so we have 8 volts and 0 amps, so let's actually turn it on. So it's drawing about and it will go into a deeper sleep whereby the amplifiers are turned off or in sleep, right, probably and it will draw less than this, I think I'm just gonna sit here and wait eventually alright, so it then goes into a sleep mode so the speaker is actually still active so it's not like hibernate, so to call it and it draws half a watt, right, so that's not too bad, right, so 57 milliamps, 60, let's call it. Right, so let's see if we turn the volume up a bit, if it wakes up. Alright, no, so you basically need to send some Bluetooth music to it, right, start a stream and then it'll start back up. So actually, this is not too bad for a battery-powered solution. Uh, you probably want to go, like, a bit higher on the voltage or as much as you can afford up to 18 and even more than 18 I would would assume is fine but yeah and at that it draws meh, also half a watt given the converters inside of it are uh, are switch mode right so but uh, yeah that's pretty much all there is to it right so battery wise it's definitely doable right just switch just shove a five uh, sorry, shove 8 volts into it and uh, you're done basically. You'd probably want an external switch or some shit, but uh, yeah, that's definitely doable.